friends, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the community of the Holy Spirit be with you all. I want to welcome you to worship at Royal York Road United Church. Welcome to those of you who are here with us in person and to those who are joining online. My name is Reverend Alana Martin, and I work with our children and youth programs here at Royal York Road United. I'm hoping you can hear me okay. Yeah, I'm seeing some nods at the back. Great. So this is a special Sunday. We are all staying in worship today for an interactive all-ages service. And I may need some help throughout the service, so I've already got some volunteers lined up. If anyone else feels that they want to participate, that is welcome. And today's theme is on the fruits of the Spirit. This is a topic that our children's church is focusing on for Lent into Easter. And it is a curriculum, in fact, written by Royal York Road's own Jillian Siemens. So thank you for all your work that you put into the content and for us to make this work together. So at points throughout the service, we will explore nine different fruits of the Spirit as described in the book of Galatians as they relate to the themes of our worship. So our first is love. Now, I have nine different types of fruit up here with me, and we're going to make a fruit bowl throughout the service. So I'm wondering if I can have a volunteer to place our first fruit as I explain what love means today. Anyone? Oh, thank you. Breaking the ice. <laughs> so you can place the banana in our fruit bowl. Perfect. Love can be an emotion. It can be an action. It can be a feeling. It can be something different to all of us. And here's one way to express our love as Jesus inspires us to do. As we gather together in this space, we're mindful of the history of the sacred land, which is the ancestral territory of First Nations who have lived here for many thousands of years. As we listen for God's voice today, we continue to pray for wisdom and courage on issues related to reconciliation with Indigenous peoples. We give thanks for our membership in Affirm United as people of faith and partners of God's ongoing acts of love and grace, we affirm that all persons are beloved children of God. We value the diversity of the human family, people of all races, ages, gender identities, sexual orientations, abilities, and economic positions. Inspired by that love, let us prepare our hearts and minds as we celebrate God's presence today.
Lent is a season of preparation and reflection. Throughout this season, we are invited to ponder what it means to walk together in the way of Christ. This isn't a solo trek, one where we go at our own desired pace. We are called to walk beside one another along the road. Last week, we lit the first candle, giving thanks for the journey we take together during this season. Today, we light the second candle and give thanks for the way in which God brings illumination to us. In the midst of the shadows of this life, God meets us and guides us toward the dawn of a new day, a day of transformation and new life. May we be born anew this Lenten season as we open our minds to new dreams and new possibilities. Let us pray. God of majesty and power, how awesome you are to us. The mountains tremble, the seas roar at the sound of your name, yet you have chosen to come to us in love and tenderness. You have called us to be people who will act in ways of peace and justice in your world. Open our hearts and our spirits, Lord, to hear your word and having heard to act in ministries of hope and peace for all your earth. These things we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. The epistle this morning is from Galatians 5 verses 22 to 25. By contrast, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There is no law against such things, and those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. If we live by the Spirit, let us also be guided by the Spirit. The response of reading is Psalm 121, found in Voices United, page 844. Please remain seated while the choir introduces the sung refrain. It will then be repeated by everyone before we begin reading responsively. I will lift up my eyes to the hills. From where will I look for help? May help comes from God, who has made heaven and earth. God will not let your foot stumble. The one who protects Israel will not slumber. The one who protects you will not slumber nor sleep. It is God who protects you, your defense at your right hand. The sun shall not strike you by day, nor the moon by night. God will protect you from all evil. God will protect your life. God will protect your going and coming, now and forever. The 
Gospel reading is from John 3, verses 1 to 17. Now there was a Pharisee named Nicodemus, a leader of the Jews. He came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do apart from the presence of God. Jesus answered him, Very truly I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God without being born from above. Nicodemus said to him, How can anyone be born after they have grown old? Can one enter a second time into the mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Very truly, I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and spirit. What is born of the flesh is flesh. What is born of the spirit is spirit. Do not be astonished that I say to you, you must be born from above. The wind blows where it chooses, and you hear the sound of it, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus said to him, How can these things be? Jesus answered him, Are you a teacher of Israel, and yet you do not understand these things? Very truly, I tell you, we speak of what we know and testify to what we have seen. Yet you do not receive our testimony. If I have told you about earthly things and you do not believe, how can you believe if I tell you about heavenly things? No one has ascended into heaven except the one who descended from heaven, the Son of Man. And just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thanks be to God. As we prepare for our anthem, I'm going to invite Erica up to share about the fruit of the Spirit called joy. Joy can be experienced in so many ways, can't it? When do you feel most joyful? Maybe when you're dancing, smiling, singing, laughing? It's an emotion, but it's also a state of being. We choose to be joyful because we believe in God, and God is good. Even when life gets hard, we have joy knowing that God is with us, that God cares for us, and that God loves us. One way many people find joy in their lives is through music. So let the joy of this gift of music wash over us now.
So today we're learning about many different gifts of the Spirit. Do we remember what is in our bowl so far? There's a banana and an apple. So I think we've talked about joy and love. Did anyone hear the others that were mentioned within our scripture today? Jillian knows them all, I know this. <laughs> so we've got peace, patience, kindness, generosity, gentleness, faithfulness, and self-control. So I'd like to tell you a story about a man named Nicodemus. Now, if you were listening to the scripture, you may know the story already, but some of us need it told many times to really understand what this story is saying. So a long, long time ago when Jesus was alive, and that was over, you know, 2,023 years ago, like it was a long time ago, lived a man named Nicodemus. Nicodemus was a decent man and had been working in the government for a few years. He had hoped that things would get better where he lived and that maybe he could help inspire people to change how they were acting to be more aligned with their faith, Judaism, with how their faith asked them to act. More and more politicians and other people in power kept trying to encourage the opposite, though. So he was sad and a bit discouraged. He kept hearing about a man named Jesus, though. He heard rumors that Jesus was offering hope and to, to the community and to the world. So he wanted to hear more. So he met with Jesus and he asked him how on earth he was going to survive this mess and hardship that he was experiencing in his community. Jesus said he should stop putting his roots in the system to sustain him, and instead he had to root himself in something entirely separate from that, in God. He had to be born from above. He had to put all of his trust in God and his life would be changed. That he would be born through the Holy Spirit in a new way. Does that make sense? A little bit. So he would need to leave behind what stressed him and instead trust in what God had planned and root himself in that foundation of his faith. Nicodemus could look to Jesus as a role model for this, as we can today. In order for Nicodemus to do this, Jesus said, he would need, it to, he would need to practice all the gifts of the Spirit, all the fruits of the Spirit, like love, peace, joy, gentleness, self-control, faithfulness, generosity, patience, and kindness. So let's talk specifically about how self-control, faithfulness, and gentleness were working in Nicodemus's life. So Jillian and Veronica are gonna come forward to read us, read to us about gentleness and self-control. Gentleness is the quality of acting gently. In the Bible, when someone models gentleness, they are choosing not to see themselves as being better than others and are willing to help whenever needed. Nicodemus would have had to be gentle with others, as we are much more likely to listen to someone if they're not yelling, don't you think? And he would have to try to be humble. Living by faith means we don't know all the answers. This one might not fit in the bowl, but we can try. Okay. Thanks, Jillian. 
control relates to our ability to be in charge of our actions and our choices. Nicodemus would have to have a certain level of self-control so that he wouldn't lose hope, so that he knew what others wanted, and so he can model good decision-making. I think Erica has our next one, faithfulness. Faithfulness refers to the idea of trusting someone or something. As followers of Jesus, we are called to be faithful to God. Just as we are faithful to God, God is faithful to us. God promises to be with us always and to guide us as we navigate the ups and downs of life. In this way, faithfulness creates a mutual relationship of trust between us and God. Nicodemus needed to trust God and be faithful that God was guiding him down the right path. So how can we learn from Nicodemus' story today? I'm currently reading an amazing novel where the heroine has all of her tools taken away from her before going into a conflict. She is feeling defeated and that she possibly cannot win against her opponent without her tools. And a mentor leaned in and said, you already have all that you need. Once she was faced with her opponent, she was reminded of that sentiment, I already have all that I need, and realized she could use her brain and her wit and her gifts to outsmart the villain in the story, and she won against all odds. God gives us everything we need. We may think we need more, But having faith in God means that we have faith that God created us with all the gifts that we need in this life. So I'd like to read you a story about this. Now it is a picture book, so anyone who wants to see the pictures, I might ask you to come a little bit closer. And we're going to take this off the recording afterwards. So if you want to read it again and come back to it, it's called When God Made You by Matthew Paul Turner. I love this story as it helps us remember how much God truly loves us and how special we each are to God. How amazing it is to think about God knowing and creating each of us in wonderfully different ways and giving each of us different gifts to use in the world. Take even these pieces of fruit, for example. We are acknowledging them as different gifts today, but for each fruit to grow into something that can nurture us and that we can eat, it needs the other gifts. It needs love, patience, gentleness, and maybe even a little self-control as we're growing it. When we can build each other up and nurture each other, When we lift up each other's gifts, we are living as God wants us to, and being born from the Spirit. We can continue Nicodemus' work and be the world God wants us to be. So I wonder so far, from what we've talked about, what fruits or gifts do you think you possess? I'm going to invite you to think about that as we sing our next hymn.
generosity is the act of giving freely without thinking about, about what one has or does not have. People can give time, money, resources, knowledge, or other things. So I wonder if I have a volunteer to place our generosity fruit. We give thanks for the opportunity to gather together and for the ministry of this community of faith. We are grateful for those who regularly contribute to the mission of Royal York Road United. If you would like to leave a donation with us today, you can drop it off in the offering plate just outside the entrance to the sanctuary. Or you can visit our website to find out more about how to give as we share what we have for the benefit of those in need. As we prepare to pray for our community and for the world, we think about the gifts of kindness and peace. Kindness can be lived out through our actions and words. And when we take time to pray deeply for those in our community or around the world, who are needing support, who, when we take time to do this, we are living into the golden rule that Jesus taught us, to love all our neighbors. There are also places around the world living in war and violence, so we pray for peace. We pray for peace to overcome hatred, violence, bullying, and war. So I'll need two volunteers to place two fruits. Thank you. Yeah. So you get to choose which fruit you want to symbolize kindness and peace. A lemon and an orange. Thank you so much. Before we pray today, I have some sad news to share that Mary Raymond passed away on Friday, March 3rd. We hold Mary's family in our prayers and the office will pass along funeral information when it's received. So friends, let us join our hearts together as we offer prayers for friends and families, neighbors and strangers, for all creation. We will close with a unison prayer, an adapted version of the Lord's Prayer written by Mark Berry, and that is in your bulletin. Let us pray. God of love, we come to you today with open hearts and open minds. We thank you for the gifts you give us and all the ways you make us special in your sight. Help us to always remember how beloved we are and to show the same love to others. Help us to pause in our daily lives to experience joy, the joy from laughter, playing, pets, music, dancing, and sports, and more. May we be a source of joy to others. In a world torn of violence, we pray for peace. Help us be peacemakers, and for those who think war or violence is their only option to have peace break down their conflicted hearts. May we be kind and faithful servants in the world, treating others how they want to be treated, extending kindness even in the face of hate and bullying. May we always stay faithful to you and live in the ways you desire. Help us to always have generous hearts, giving what we have to those in need. Help us to practice patience and self-control when life feels hard and frustrating. And lastly, creating God, may we walk this world gently, being mindful of others, taking care of creation, 
and using words and actions that uplift and inspire. We know that you hear all of our prayers and we take a moment now to name our personal prayers to you in the silence of our hearts. God, we pray for the family of Mary Raymond, that they may feel your comfort in their grief. God, you hear our prayers even when we cannot find the words. And so we pray in unison our gratitude. O oh, breathing life, your name shines everywhere. Release a space to plant your presence here. Imagine your possibilities now. Embody your desire in every light and form. Grow through us in this moment's bread and wisdom. Untie the knots of failure binding us as we release the strains that hold others' faults. Help us not to forgive our source, yet free us from not being in the present. From you arises every vision, power, and song from gathering to gathering. Amen. May our future actions grow from here. Well, finally, patience is the practice of waiting, isn't it? When, you have, when have you had to feel patient in your life? Maybe while waiting in line for ice cream, 
waiting for a toy or game to become available or for a church worship to finish. Patience can be hard, but the amazing thing is that God has all the patience in the world for us, even when we make mistakes. So let's celebrate that patience. I have one more piece of fruit before we go. It's a peach. Pe the peach will represent our patience. Does I just, do you want to do it, Chloe? No. Are you sure? Okay. How about someone in the front here? You want to come together, maybe? <laughs> Perfect. So here is our peach of patience. And here is our beautiful bowl of fruit, symbolizing all the beautiful gifts of the Spirit. So God of infinite patience, loving presence, and dazzling surprises, be with us as we leave this place today. Guide and guard our lives and bless our witness to your love. We go in peace, seeking ministries of justice and hope. Amen.